Hey there everybody, Racer52 here. In this video I'd like to show you how I converted a Remo practice pad into an electronic drum. You've seen the video of the practice pad in operation with a white dot illustrating that there was another trigger underneath. Well now I'm going to show you the internals of this and see how this was done. So to start you're going to need a Remo practice pad. You're also going to need if you're not planning on using the original drum head, which has a little bit kind of a louder sound when struck, if you're not planning on using that, then you will need to have some mesh material to make a mesh head for this. The uh, hoop size of the Remo practice pad is not a standard drum head size. There may be someone out there making a mesh head for these, however it's not a common drum. So a 7 or 8 inch drum or a 6 inch or 10 inch drum head does not fit these, it's not a standard one. To illustrate the functionality, I've got a trigger here and I've got it wired to my Roland TD20. Just turn that on. So this is the heart of the electronic drums that are piezo driven. These triggers are very sensitive and don't take being struck too well, they'll break. But if we could mount them to a drum head and fasten where they wouldn't move around, then whenever I played the drum head, I'd get an electronic sound. The problem with this is if I miss and hit that trigger, there goes my trigger. So I need a way of doing this that's going to protect the drum, uh, the electronic trigger. Many ways are used. In a standard drum shell, people will take a crossbar and mount the trigger to that and then use a foam cone to protect the trigger and to transmit the head vibrations directly down to it. I'll turn some electronics back on. So. That's one way of doing it, but in this application, we want to take that thing and stick it inside that casing and protect it from being broken. I've taken the liberty of removing all the screws out of my existing conversion, and what we're seeing is the painted shell casing painted black with some chrome trim. The chrome is simply some door edge trimming from an automotive supply. It has a U-channel shape to it. It's normally inserted on the edge of a car door as a chrome trim. I cut it to fit and inserted it on the vertical edge of the practice pad. My drum head is a homemade mesh drum head. Removing the hoop, remove the drum head and install a mesh drum head this drum head I used the original rolling hoop and converted it to a mesh head by epoxying. You can super glue, uh, but you need to fasten this drum head to the hoop. Underneath we find a layer of foam. This layer of foam is sandwiching a metal disc between another layer of foam. The back side of this metal disc has one of these glued to it. The brass side is glued on the underside of this. I have one here prepared to show you. There's a larger version for another drum. The metal disc with the piezo fastened directly with epoxy directly to the underside of this disc. Putting it on the underside further isolates it from the strike surface. Wherever I strike the drum pad the drum head will transfer that vibration through the foam to this plate and when this plate vibrates so does the trigger mount underneath it. Now what's happening is I've got this plate glued to this foam so it doesn't shift around. Underneath that trigger wire is routed down and out the bottom to a TRS jack. A jack that it has three signals, tip, ring, and sleeve also referred to as a stereo jack. So two wires from the head trigger 
going out and down to the outside bottom of the shell. Also you see another trace coming in here. This lead is coming from my rim trigger and going across the inside of the casing and then out to the jack as well. So I have both my shell edge trigger and this head trigger going out. On the bottom side here I have mounted one of these triggers, the smaller 27 millimeter, directly inside and just epoxied it right to this, or actually I believe I used foam tape, foam tape right to the shell so that whenever the shell is struck it will vibrate this. That trigger is underneath this cover. No foam insulation, it's just a protector so when someone grabs the case they don't accidentally mash and break this trigger. So the shell trigger which is effectively the rim trigger is mounted underneath here. It's wired back through the inside of the case through the inside here across and out the bottom and that's just for aesthetics. It could have been wired straight across under here but it was for me cleaner. I ran it through. It comes up one pair of these wires is from my shell trigger. The other pair is from my head trigger from the metal plate piezo. Going out this tip ring and sleeve jack which is where you would plug in your wire, your cable to go to your drum module. The bracket that I used to mount this jack was simply an angle iron corner brace that I ground and fit to fit inside the space allowed drilled a hole through and bolted to the case. Drilled a big hole to mount the jack and as you can see I still have not mounted a protective cover for it. The mounting hole for the pad fits a 1 quarter 20 threaded cymbal stand so I've been using that. You can also mount some foam tape on this and mount it to a board and then use whatever mounting system you have. So to repeat, from the bottom side, there's a piezo right under here, wire coming up, going out to the jack. Sandwiched between two pieces of foam is the metal plate with the piezo on there going out to the jack. You can see the foam protrudes above the casing so that when the drum head is put on and squeezed down, that foam is compressed and holds everything in place. The hoop goes back on and now you have a dual trigger Remo pad electronic drum conversion. I hope that helped.